Welcome to the Big E Outdoor Radio Show with your hosts, Big E and Brandon of Big E TV. Found nationally on your favorite outdoor television channels. Big E Outdoor Radio challenges all the hot topics in the outdoors from racing to hunting and even grilling in the backyard. Our mission is to educate on the facts of the impact of the outdoors on all our lives and encourage good stewardship and good fellowship among our ranks. Follow Big E Outdoors on Facebook at Big E Outdoors and Big E Outdoor Radio. Send us feedback and get in on conversations with us. Fasten your seatbelts, because this ain't your daddy's morning show. We'll be right back with Biggie and Brandon in the morning on Big E Outdoor Radio. Big E Outdoors, located at Cedar Creek, is reopening its doors soon after its new remodeling. Home to the area's first and only big game hunting museum with educational exhibits displaying animals from around the world and facts around the hunters' contributions to their survival. Pick up some unique souvenirs and gifts from the museum and from the Big E TV shows. Meet the pro staff from Big E TV and Big E Outdoor Radio, a great place to stop in with the whole family. And while you're there, book your next hunting trip with the Big E Outdoors Professional Hunters. With over 21 personal hunting destinations worldwide, you'll be sure to find a quality getaway with the Big E Outdoors destinations. Big E Outdoors is also home to Adrenaline High Geographic. Check us out online at BigEOutfitters.com and register to win a free hunt. Big E Outdoors at Cedar Creek. And welcome back to some more Big E Outdoor Radio. We're at the top of a brand new hour, Brandon, and... uh, you know, we were at, at the end of the last hour, we were talking about this whole deal about rhino horn. Yeah. Uh, it's a great deal. They overturned the ban on rhino horn trade of legally raised rhinos. And this ties into the lion thing that we we're talking about. Um, the fact that legally hunted lions, their bones can be uh, traded and sold, and that replaces tiger bone. Yeah. And it's helping the tigers come back. It's helping the lions. It's helping the tigers. Yep. And the bears, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was just over visiting a fellow over by Shano that has a nice trophy room, and he has, you know, several animals. that he And he's got a giraffe in there, and he's got both kinds of zebra. And I was talking to him about how, you know, a lot of folks, including hunters, will go on social media when somebody has one of those animals and start saying, ah, oh, nobody needs to hunt them, you know, nobody eats them. And and they laughed, and they said, oh, yes, they do. Yeah. Because they've been there, too, and they've seen it. They said when they, they hunted their giraffe in 2006, and they hunted it in Namibia, and when he hunted his giraffe, the uh, village, the village people... <laughs> Not the village people like we think of, but the people from the village came out and used every speck of the meat, the bones, everything. And as they were doing all that, they they had a big celebration that night for him. They danced for him, and they treated him like he was the chief or the big king for the night. The great white hunter. Yeah, because he provided the meat for him. And you get those folks that say, well, geez, why don't they just go out and hunt for themselves? Um. Again, number one, the government over there does not want these people running around with weapons because they are warring people. Yeah. And if they are weaponized with any kind of weapons, they will fight and they will kill each other and there will be nothing but wars. There's, there's no peace in the country if they have weapons. Okay, that's number one. Number two, when they hunt, they hunt for meat. They don't care. It's brown is down for them. They don't care whether it's a mama. They don't care if it's a baby. They don't care if it's pregnant. They don't care what time of year it is. They don't care. It's substance for them. It's substance. So when hunters who are hunting with regulations provide food for them by herd management and harvesting mature animals and letting the, the females go and the young ones go, they stop poaching. And that's why the herd is on the rise. The minute we stop hunting, they'll wipe them out. 
And this goes right to the conversation that we started having about wolves earlier when you brought up the wolves. Mm Mm-hmm. Wyoming, I didn't know. I thought that this whole wolf man thing was just in, like, the northern states up here, was just our species of wolf. Wyoming got caught up in that band, too. Oh, good Lord. And you know what that does out there. Woo, man. So there's guys out there. It's wiping out. Them wolves are wiping out those elk herds and stuff out there. That's not good. That's but, not good at all. Well, time out. Everybody's saying that Yellowstone's coming back and how the beauty of it and all this because the wolves were reintroduced and the elk and that aren't destroying the uh, vegetation and all that. And well, there ain't going to be no elk out there pretty soon. So what's happening now is that the uh, the wolves are wiping everything out, but what they don't realize is when you take the wolf out of, or when you take the uh, hunting season off the wolf, you devalue the wolf. Okay. Prior, when there was a wolf season, the outfitters, the ranchers, the farmers, there was a value on the wolf, so they could sell the wolf hunt. Right? Yeah. It's worth something. You're not going to go out there and throw money away. Okay? You're going to sell that hunt. But when it's not worth anything, you're just going to throw it out. So now that the wolf is not worth anything, it's a pest. Now it's killing the things you can make money on, elk and deer, and your cattle. So now when you see the wolf, I don't care how you want to look at it, folks. You can look at it any way you want. You can say they can't do that. It's illegal. You can can sit here and argue this with me all day long. I don't care how much you love the wolf. Stop crying. Listen to me. This is the truth. The wolf is going to be shoot, shovel, and shut up, and they will wipe them out. This is why they were wiped out before. There's no value on it. It's garbage. Yep. And, and that's why through the years when the wolf uh, uh, population was way down and there was a wolf and they reintroduced it, there were no, hunting was not what it is today Yeah. because there wasn't animals to hunt. The elk herd was so small, the deer herd, the mule deer, everything was so small because there just weren't the population of huntable animals because the wolves had taken it out. The wolves went away, the population came up, becomes an industry and more hunting and all that. So it's it, And, and it's, the thing is, is that if you have a wolf, if you have wolves, you got to hunt them. Because you, number one, you got to control their population, but you also have to have a value on them. If there's no value on the wolf, trust me, we're going to wipe them out as hunters because we want the animal that has value back. The yep. elk, the deer our grouse, our turkeys, we want them back because the wolf's got no value to us. Do you think that we're going to sit around here and and drive around all day long and look at just wolves? No, we don't want them running around, eating our dogs and chickens and whatever else. We're going to wipe... you name it. The wolves are going to get wiped out. So all the tree huggers and all the wolf lovers out there who are out there, oh, the wolf, you know, the wolf is a beautiful animal. It's got some mystic powers and uh, whatever. You're doing the wolf more harm by crying and wanting federal protection on that and making it because that's exactly what made the lion damn near extinct. Yep. Because uh, it had no value. Because it had no value. The minute that they allowed legal hunting of the lion, the lion became an animal that people wanted to protect and to raise because they needed to farm it and hunt it. Yeah. And... It's, it's even the hogs, the hogs in the southern United States. Yeah. They were mowing these things down down there. They were poisoning them. Yep. But now people are hunting the hogs, and they realize they're worth money. Now they're actually putting up catch pens, and they're catching these things and putting them in fenced areas to, to be able to hold them to hunt them because they don't want to run out. <laughs> Which I don't think that they're going to run out of hogs. No, the they way will. Those they, things breed. No. Yeah, the way they, they, they populate is yeah. uncontrollable. And that's but one but the thing is, is that when they hunt a lot of them, what's happening is they're hunting them down so fast that the big hogs, and that's why some of these guys, they might have, you know, a 1,000 acres of land, and they'll set aside 100 acres, and they don't have to put up a high fence. They just put, you know, and they keep the hogs that are in there. They only hunt the big ones. Right. You know, and they and they say, well, when we go over here, we're only hunting the big hogs. But right. when we go over here, we can hunt anything. Right. And they do that because otherwise there won't be any big ones because they got so many people coming to hunt. Like I said, right. group of 54 guys going down there in nine days killing 14,000 pounds of pork. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot of hogs dying. And that's, right. that's net 
That's net. That's after the bolus. Yeah, that's yeah. net gross, exactly. So, again, you know, now that the wolf has no value, all these ranchers out there, every single hunter out there, I guarantee you, you're out there hunting elk, you see a wolf, what's going to happen? It's going to die. Yeah, sure. You're out there, you're raising, your rancher's riding around checking his fences, he sees a wolf, it's going to die. Yeah. When that wolf was worth some money, they would let it go because the hunter might be coming to pay for it. Yeah. So they would maintain a herd and they would... Or, or try to coexist. Pot, yeah, they would coexist with them, and they would they would harvest the ones that they had tags for, and they would manage a herd. Well, now it's going to get out, and they're going to say, "Hey, look, we'll fix this. We're going to wipe them all out now." Yeah. Well, I can tell you just around here, uh, the people around here, everybody I ever talked to is, you know, they're disappearing. Mean what they're meaning by they're disappearing is. They're gut shooting them or whatever to let them run off and die. Yeah, and, and to, to eliminate the problem, what they are causing. Yeah, um, the wolves. Are, one wolf, the amount of uh, deer that it can eat in one day or one year is uh, more than uh, most humans will shoot in a lifetime by far. Yeah, twenty five up to twenty five for per wolf. So one hundred thirty. So yeah, yeah, somewhere's in there. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the way I look at it is. Um, once you devalue an animal, or any animal, so that so there you go. If you ban hunting, even yeah, you devalue the animal. So now, if you got a bunch of land that you're using for hunting, and the guy says, "Well, heck, I'm going to clear all the trees and I'm going to turn it into farmland." Then, yeah, you know, I kill all them animals. Why do I want all them deer out there, or those or those caribou, or those elk, or whatever they are? I don't want any of these animals out here. They're not worth anything to me. I need to turn this into a subdivision or farmland. Yeah. The heck with the animals. You don't and want the government will do that immediately. If, if, if it's going to see a profit by eliminating anything, they do it simply because there's something else for them to get out of it. Right. But, but uh, you know, back to what I'm saying is by when anti-hunters win, right. when, anti -hunters, That's what I'm saying. when anti hunters get rid of an animal, they devalue it. Or if they get rid of hunting, they say, oh, we're not going to hunt that anymore. All the rest of us, farmers and hunters and everybody, we're like, well, screw it. If that's what you want. You know, they ain't any worth anything to us anymore. Wipe them out. Clear out the woods. The only reason that we have the woods and we have the, the animals is because they're worth something. So when you say, oh, yeah, we preserve them and we conserve them to hunt them, yeah, that's right. The reason they're there, folks, is because of us. You don't want animals? No problem. Stop the hunting. There won't be any animals. Right. They'll wipe everything out. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to take another quick break and we'll be back with some more Big E Outdoor Radio. Hey, welcome back. We're back with some more Biggie Outdoor Radio, and uh, we were we were having our conversation here about the wolves. And Scott, you brought up a, a good point about the wolves. Go ahead. Well, I mean, you want to talk about uh, letting uh, nature take its course and letting the wolves populate. Well, what's going to happen? It's going to eliminate uh, the deer. Um, everything else that it, it, it feeds on, so there's none of that wildlife. Well, where's it going to go next? Okay, and it's already doing this as far as cattle and stuff like that. They're getting into it. Then what happens when they can't get to the cattle or there uh, anything with that? What's their next prey? Because they have their their, their substance in life is to eat, yeah, and breed. Okay. Now the, you know before you get too far, there's you always get these anti hunters that say, "Well, what happened before man was around?" And let me tell you something: man has always been around. Man has been around and been hunting and managing animals since the beginning of time. As man has grown in population, so have the animals. When these wolves were running around here and, and in this country, as trees were growing more and this country was transforming from being mostly plains and things like that, and the trees were coming up and the wolves were becoming more, the Indians were here. They were hunting. Yeah, they hunted them all uh, the time. Our... Our uh, forefathers were coming in here with their muskets, and they were hunting them. And they were keeping these wolves and stuff in line. If not, these wolves would have, because they are an apex predator like we are, they would have taken over, and they would have killed everything. Including us. Eventually, right, when there's no more food. They're going to go after us. That's right. They're going to move in, and they'll be, they'll be coming up, and they'll jump over the fence into your local daycare and start eating your youngins. You right. Know. They're going to go for the easiest thing there is. Yep. If you don't think that's going to happen, you're dead wrong because we've already had two encounters this year with people. Uh, 
And and I believe that, that we've had those encounters because there's less deer down there for them to eat. So what's going to happen? They're going to move to cattle. They're going to move to your pets. Then they're going to then they're going to start to be where they're going to attack a person if they see you in the right situation. To be where they're going to come into your backyards. And the reason that you haven't heard a lot of this in the past, though, uh, of encounters, is because there had been a, such a substantial amount of uh, prey for them. Now they're starting to populate so much. That there's not enough prey to go there's around. There's not enough prey to go yeah. around, so now they're coming after us. And, and I'm going to tell you, this This goes back to the Africa thing again, all right? Uh, back when the dentist there, Dr. Palmer, shot that lion, and people were all in an yeah. uproar about that. Right, wanted to kill when, him and everything else because he shot a lion. Yeah, when Hwenge was uh, was established, the national park, the people around there that lived there, they did not want that park. The, all the, the, the villages and the cities and stuff, they didn't want that national park. Now, folks, I'm going to talk. I know that this radio show reaches more than just the, the Wausau area, but I'm going to talk in terms of Wausau. Wausau, Rothschild, Mosinee, all you people that are, are around the mountain of Rib Mountain. Okay, Put this into perspective. The state of Wisconsin comes in, or better yet, the federal government comes in and looks at Rib Mountain and says, hey, you know what, this would make a great national park. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure everybody's houses come off the mountain. We're going to take the ski hill off, and we're just going to make a perimeter around there. Now, there's no fence, because there's no fence around Hawaii. And we're going to fill this place, because this is the, we want to have everything that's native to North America in here. So we're going to put grizzly bears... Uh, we're going to put wolves, um, we're going to put moose, we're going to put all these animals in here, everything. We're going to fill this place up. But don't worry, they're going to stay on the mountain because that's, I mean, you know, that's yeah. where they're going to stay. We're going to put them all there. Yeah, because they got plenty of things to eat just there. They don't have to yeah. go anywhere else. We're going to put all these animals yeah. on there. We're going to make this a national park. What do you think is going to happen? All these people are going to be like, are you nuts? We don't want grizzly bears, mountain lions, and wolves being let loose like crazy on this thing and then and this being a national park because what's going to happen? Those grizzly bears are going to come into town. Those wolves are going to come into town. You know, they're going to they're, they're going to be in our villages. They're going to be in our our uh, daycares. They're going to be coming down. And you're going to come out of Walmart someday and there's going to be a grizzly bear walking across the parking lot. Trust me. Yeah, because they just won't have the fear of it anymore. That's right. So... That's exactly what was going on with, with Hawaii, and these people said, no, we don't want that. So then the government came in, and they said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, you know, you're right, so we're going to put a buffer zone. The buffer zone, anything that comes in there, that's a hunting zone. So anything that comes in there can be hunted. That's where that dentist actually shot the lion, was in that buffer zone. So the actually, he was on private land on the other side of the buffer zone, so when they said that they lured it off the park, the animal had already come off the park, was in the buffer zone, and then they baited it out of the buffer zone onto the private ranch. So hell, they could have they could have hunted it even in the buffer zone. Right. So, um, but that's why those people didn't want those animals there because they know that they're going to populate and keep overpopulating to the point that they can't live there anymore. No, they have to move. They have to expand their range. And then once they move, they have to go somewhere. Now, just like they're an apex predator, we're an apex predator. And every apex predator was put here to keep something in check. The human, whether you want to hear it or not, is the only apex predator that, that routinely hunts itself. It through, does. through war and through whatever we do. Lysis. And because there's nothing else that, that readily hunts us... We're here to keep ourselves in check as well, because we're the only ones that that uh, can can manage our own population. But our job, whether the antis want to believe it or not, is to hunt and manage the population of all the other animals, whether they're apex predators or not. And so that's that's what we do. Uh, if it wasn't for us. In each area where there was an apex predator, they would eventually take over their habitat, and there would be nothing else but them. Right, exactly. Yeah. The wolf would take over, the lions would take over, because they'll, 
they'll keep on populating and they'll keep on eating and they'll keep on killing everything well, until the nothing left to kill. The state is way up it, as much as the DNR just tells you it's not. I mean, how many how many times do you see somewhere where there's a trail cam, mountain lion on it, uh, tracks from it, all this stuff, and they try to wash it off, just like they do with the wolf saying, oh, those are dog tracks. You ever look at the difference between a dog track and a wolf track? They're enormously bigger than a dog track. I don't care. You're talking a 100, 120-pound dog, a big, big dog. Still they won't don't, leave a track. They won't leave a track the size of a wolf. It's not half the size, people. Don't believe anything they're trying to feed you. It yeah. just can't happen. And then when they say that, you know, all well, they know where these packs of wolves are, there's this pack and that pack, they don't have a clue on where half these packs of wolves are. There's there's uh, branch packs and there's little loner packs. There's, I mean, there's, these wolves are running around everywhere. So we definitely have a problem with that. Uh, we have a problem with, uh, well, like you said, the mountain lions are moving in, um, which there's not a lot of them right now, but eventually um, that's something that's going to have to be looked at. If we don't hunt these predators, they're going to take over. They will hunt us. Yeah, and uh, and they will. I mean, a wolf. Uh, and what are they doing now? They're talking about killing more does, more deer. So there's pressure on the deer from us. There's pressure on the deer from the wolves. There's right. pressure on the deer from disease. Bears. So pretty soon, when the deer aren't there anymore, the wolf says, "Well, I got to eat." Yeah, it doesn't you know. eat tree bark. I, I just had, uh, you know, five pups this year, or six pups, and uh, we got a whole pack here. There's 20 of us in the pack, and we all, you know, so now it's time for us to go out and find something to eat. And so they go wandering around, they look for some cattle, and but if they don't come on some cattle, they come across a couple little kids in the woods playing. There you little go. Red Riding Hood are all over, but it's in real life this time. So Exactly. And, and you can say what you want to about, oh, they know where the packs are. We talked about this just a second ago. But the fact is, the males of the pack are pushed out because they don't want, they don't, they're, yep. they're, they're designed not to inbreed. So those wolves. Just like the lions. Yeah, exactly. They're pushed out. So where do they go? They don't just disappear because they're pushed out of the pack. I know a lot of you hunters that are listening to this show. You know this, and that, but uh, but there's still there's even a lot of hunters that don't they don't they don't click with it. They don't put two and two together, and that's why it's like just look at it with some uh, with an open mind or look at it with some logic. You got you got to see it. It's there. It's right in front of you. And you know if there's hunters out there that are wolf lovers, which I can't quite figure that out yet, but. Well, I mean, I think it's a beautiful animal. Don't get me wrong yeah, right there, yeah. uh, but that's. I not mean, I don't want to see it extinct. No, not at you, all. But you got to hunt it. I mean, you got to. You got to. It's got to be controlled. Yeah. And I and I don't have a problem with the fact that we have wolves in Wisconsin. I think it's cool, but we do need to hunt them. It's not that we need to wipe them out, but we need to hunt them. If we don't hunt them, then I can tell you right now they are going to get wiped out. Right. Because when they get to be too many, then the anger sets in, and then what happens is now you have the farmers are mad, you have. Uh, the hunters are mad because we're not seeing any animals. You have even the regular homeowner who had Fifi eaten. They're mad. Uh, people are just all looking for them, and they're just going to kill them to kill them. So, again, the same you, thing that's happened with hogs. Yep. You because they got just so overpopulated, they destroyed everything. Yeah. Destroyed. And, and I'll tell you, the coyote is, is you, you kind of look at the coyote, but really not. Because if you think the coyote got out of hand, you ain't seen anything yet. Yeah. The coyote's nowhere near the predator that the wolf is. So uh, on that note, we'll take a quick break and we'll come right back with some more Biggie Outdoor Radio. This segment of Biggie Outdoors is brought to you by Snap Fitness of Wausau. It's time to get in shape and Snap Fitness is the right place to do it. With two locations in Weston and Wausau, you're never far from a Snap Fitness. Open 24-7 for members with clean and well-maintained equipment. Check out their new location across from Fleet Farm on Wausau's north side with all new machines and equipment. Sign up for some classes or training. Pick up the supplements you need and take advantage of the monthly deals and sign-up specials they have going on now. The staff at Snap Fitness is waiting for you to assist you in any way they can. So head on down to Snap Fitness today and get signed up. Hey, welcome back to Biggie Outdoor Radio. We'll lighten things up a little bit. Uh, you know, we kind of beat the old wolf thing up pretty good. I think everybody kind of gets the hint. 
and we talked a little bit about the rhinos, and we talked about all that. Hey, you know, I promised that we were gonna we were gonna get on this hog thing, and Brandon had to leave. But uh, again, anybody that's looking to uh, go on some some great hog hunts, if you if you want to, come on down to uh, Biggie Outdoors here at Cedar Creek Mall, and get with us. We're going to set up some winter hog hunts. There's nothing else to hunt here in January and late December, January and February. Coyotes, but most people don't do that. Well, we're going to set up some of them too, but uh, we'll set up some uh, some big group trips and we'll head down to uh, Georgia and we will do some hog hunting and we'll take the big freezer along with us. We'll go down there. Um, we'll come back with your, your animals all cleaned and halved and, um, and that way if you want, we can we can debone the whole thing. But if otherwise, we'll come back with them all cleaned and have them. We'll drop them right here at Country Fresh Meats. And that way, you can have bacon made, and you can have sausage made, or brats, or whatever you want. I mean, and pork and roast yeah. and everything else. I mean, yeah. everything is it, it's it's a pig. Yeah, it's definitely, and it's a good pig because it's it's, it's not as fat. It's much more lean, and it's very natural because right. they eat. There's I have to tell you right now, there's nobody pumping any. Uh, Chemically chemicals. treated food into these things, or else exactly. they're eating the stuff that's in the woods. So they're not fatting them up in a matter of a year and killing them. Yeah, they're excellent, excellent eating. Uh, oh, I love going down there and hunting them. So if you want to have some fun, come on down and see us. We're going to set up some groups. Go down there in groups of uh, six to ten guys, and and uh, if we can get bigger groups, we'll go. We surely can handle them. We got a great place to stay, and we surely got uh, good meals and stuff while we're there. And it's a good trip. So uh, if you want, it's a good thing to bring your kids on. We can go down and do it over a, a four-day weekend very easily. Uh, leave here on a Thursday afternoon. Go down there. We'll be hunting by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, or, you know, leave here on a Thursday morning even or whatever. And be back here, uh, you know, on uh, a Sunday evening or we can be back on a Monday evening. It just depends on how people want to go, but... Right. We'll set them up to do it on on a four day uh, weekend type thing, so that we're we're doing it over a weekend. You're only missing two days of school or or two days of work or or two days of whatever. Yeah, I want to get on with that new uh, next gen uh, crossbow. Crossbow. I want to get on them with uh, my AR that I just picked up last yeah. year. Go yeah. have a little fun with that. So I'll tell you what, guys. You know, if you're listening, spread that around at work. If you can get your uh, you know maybe your bosses want to get in on that, you want to do a little work getaway or something like that. You're going to get three, four guys together. You come on down. You see us. We'll set it up. We'll get some groups set up around it, and uh, I think this will be a great getaway. Uh, it's it's pretty inexpensive for what you're going to be getting, uh, and you're going to find out you're going to be bringing back a ton of pork. Um, you probably want to split some with your families because you're going to have more pork than you're going to want to eat. And from everybody that does it, they just love it. They yeah. can't believe how yeah. much. That, it, that's why there's a group of 54 guys going down because the yeah. group last year loved it so much they brought more people they, with them. They said yeah. that they had to turn guys away this year. Next year they're thinking they're going to have over 100 in that group. It's growing that fast. Right. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So, uh, again, if you want to do something fun, come on down and uh, and talk to us about that. Now, we you mentioned coyote hunting. And um, toward beginning of March, somewhere around March, middle of March, we're going to start taking a group, if anybody wants to go and have a real blast, literally, we're going to head out to South Dakota and do some coyote hunting. And I'm going to tell you, we have plenty of coyotes around here, but nothing like out there. They're, they're hard to get on around here because we have so much vegetation and things right, like exactly. that. exactly. You can't see them. You go to... Go to South Dakota with us, and trust me, when we set up on coyotes out there, you can see them coming for a mile away. And, you know, you'll have them at 600, 800 yards, whatever. So if you're a long-range shooter or you think you're a long-range shooter and you just want to spend some shells, whatever, we're going to set up some coyote hunts, and we're going to go out there and we'll go to the Pine Ridge Reservation and we'll hunt with uh, my buddy Lance out there. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have a ball. And uh, this is another hunt. I've got I've got a couple of guides out there that'll that'll take us out. They know how to call them. They they'll get them coyotes in. And trust me, it's going to blow your mind uh, because they got coyotes out there like we got squirrels here. In fact, you know what? We don't have squirrels around Wisconsin like we used to. Oh, we do around my area. Do you? Oh my God! But uh, well, they got a lot of coyotes out there. That's all I'm going right. to say. They got more coyotes than we got deer. I can tell you that. So. <laughs> Uh, everywhere you Prairie drive, prairie chickens, prairie yep. chickens. So we're going to do some group hunts like that. They're inexpensive. They're they're good ways for you to get out to do something with your kids. And you know what what better what better way to spend some time with your 
you know, with your family or get a couple of guys together and a couple of, a couple of guys with their sons or daughters or whatever and go get spend a four-day weekend and go have some fun. Exactly. You know, uh, we'll do the driving for you if that's what you want, but uh, come on and, and get with us and Scott and I and Brandon and we'll take you down and do some hunting with you. So uh, talking about deer hunting, um, there's an article here on the uh, Outdoor Life that talks about if you're if you're looking to uh, be more successful with your deer hunting. <laughs> now, obviously, they're not talking about Wisconsin here, but other places, deer hunting, elk hunting, whatever. They're talking about going deep into the woods, and this is something that I've personally had experience with. And they're talking about hunting public areas, and they're saying, you know, that out west, you know, they use horses to get way back into the to the back areas where the big live, the, where the big where the big elk live. And it says, why not do the same for the whitetails in the Midwest? And you know, that's there is a lot of truth to that because you know, if it's easy to get at, everybody's at it, right? You know, how how many times have you gone out someplace in the public and you? You walked in a couple hundred yards, you sit down, and you got guys walking by you all day long. Happens all the time. Well, if they're walking by you, it's because it's easy to walk by you, so you should have went farther in. you got to go where nobody wants to walk and get as far in as you can, and you'll have less people walking by you, number one. And the other thing is, is while all the rest of the people are walking around in the front. They're pushing them back towards you. They're pushing them back to you, yeah. Uh, sometimes the best way you can do is go back in so far that you're almost back near private land because you don't want to get on private land. Don't trespass. But if you get back in there, you're probably looking at a little bit better success because, you know, most guys are hunting the front and they're pushing the animals back. The animals are headed for the private land. But a lot of that is hard to come by now in the state unless you're going up north. And the problem up north, again, is... No deer. Too no many deer. wolves. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. then you come down here to central Wisconsin, and there just isn't those big parcels anymore. No, and, and when they do that, they got roads in them all. Exactly. And then you farther south you go, then you've got the issue of the farm, so much farming. Not that we don't have a lot of that around here. He, also, the, 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 the land parcels just aren't there anymore. Yeah. If you're out west... This kind of stuff will work on public land, and uh, you know, it's, if you don't have a horse, it talks about pedal power. Uh, their bikes, these these bikes are these big fat tires on them. You know, that stuff's all legal. You can use a, a bicycle to get back into these places. I mean, yeah. you know, some people can't use a bike. That's fine, but uh, you know, Mountain bikes. Yeah, you can float in with a with a boat or a canoe. So there's ways that you can get in to places that. You don't need to have a guide take you back in, and you don't need to have a horse. The farther back you get, the better. Now, somebody was telling me about there's places around here even where they floated with canoes, float down these rivers and see a lot of deer right? laying along the riverbanks. I think it'd probably work more if you had snow. I don't Maybe. know. I mean, yeah, you get along the rivers, especially where it's you know not populated. Um, that is an advantage because the uh, deer will come down into the, you know, the offshoots of the, the river and the, the lowlands there, and you do see a lot of them. And, and because the pressure actually on land is pushing these deer into your um, swampy, area. swampy areas and stuff like that, uh, you know, deer, big bucks didn't get too big by uh, sitting around and letting everybody see them. I mean, they, I've heard stories of uh, getting them in deep swamps where the, basically the buck was laying in muck and, and that for the whole the whole season because he just went nocturnal and hang, hangs there. I mean, that's where you go after your big bucks during season oh, if yeah. you have a confined area for that. That's the big problem. Yeah, I think that that these animals are thinking a little bit now, and when people start coming in and start messing around in the woods that they start heading for, the thickest cover that they can find. And when you come to a spot and you think, God, I don't want to walk through there, I'm going to go around it. <laughs> Good chance that the thing you just went around there's a buck laying in there with his head down and he's watching you walk by. Right, because human nature is you take the easiest route for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you don't think you are, you're trying to get down into them swamps, you still will walk around that pocket. Right. And you might bump out a nervous deer or one that's younger, but the big old swamp buck, he's gonna lay tight. They'll, yeah, they'll let you walk right by him. They'll do that in small little 
you know, it don't 10, have to be 10 20 yard uh, patch of, of or just grass. That yeah. grass in the middle of a field or something like that, they'll sit there all year long because most people aren't going to go out in the middle of a field and go through something like that. But yeah. they still have 360 degree uh, view, so they can look all around to see if there's something getting too close. And, uh, and they're normally on the farming areas. They're used to people being around them at that point, you know. So if you're out there looking, I mean, especially now that we're getting to be to the point where it's getting to be harder and harder to find a buck or to find a deer, period, you're going to have to get a little bit smarter and a little bit more resourceful to find what you're looking for. Right. You're going to have to get out there and uh, get into the deeper spots, kick those little bushes in the middle of the field and stuff like that. So we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back with our last segment wrap up Biggie Outdoor Radio. Hey, welcome back to Biggie Outdoor Radio, and uh, we're wrapping up today's show. And you know, uh, let's kind of summarize things a little bit here, Scott. A great article that I once saw on uh, social media, and it said uh, the Ten Commandments of how to deal with anti hunters. And this kind of falls right into uh, the Biggie Outdoor television shows and what we do and everything like that. There's a lot of things on here. Um, you know, one of the first things it says, be bold. And, uh, you know, if, if someone says, are you a hunter? Say, yeah, I am. What are you? Don't, uh, don't not be proud or don't beat around the bush or, or try to avoid controversy by, you know, staying away from it. Hold your head high, hit that, hit that thing head on. Yeah. Don't play the shame game. Yeah. That's right. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You're a hunter yet. You, you, you're darn right I'm a hunter. And uh, the number two thing is get briefed. And this is this is what uh, falls into our, our shows, our TV shows. We are out there trying to help you get as, mu- as many facts as we can that you can use in a non-argumentative and educated, intelligent way. We're not... There's a lot of times that you might watch our TV show or you might listen to our radio show and you're going to hear things and you say, well, I already knew that. That's great. But you're somewhere along the way, we're hoping that you're going to pick some things up. And, you know, even when we're over doing our hunts in Africa or doing our hunts overseas, we're learning things all the time. And we know there's hunters that are learning things all the time because we watch the social media comments by hunters. Right. All the time. You know, hunters come on there and they protect the wolf. Hunters come on there and they say, who would ever eat a giraffe or a zebra? Or why would you hunt a lion? You know, we don't eat it as American citizens. I mean, it's just not a common thing for us. Yep. But over there, they love it. I mean... Well, it, and it depends on it depends on who. You know, 80% of the population of South Africa can't afford to buy beef. So, you know, I've even had people from South Africa come on to Facebook and try to blast me and tell me, hey, I live in South Africa and nobody eats giraffe and zebra. Right. Well, I'm telling you what, nobody with a smartphone in South Africa eats giraffe and zebra. Yeah. But the rest of the population that can't afford smartphones, they can't afford anything but the giraffe and zebra salami that they get in the in the butcheries. And that's what they live off of. Right. And when we're not over there hunting them, they actually have people who are paid to go out in the off season, and all they do is shoot giraffes and zebras to control the populations, to call them down, to be able to feed those people. Exactly. And so, uh, it's their food share. Yeah. And so, when it's when it's talking about getting briefed, and then it falls right into the next thing, and it says feed your social media with facts, um, as you do with pics. Great hunters. Uh, and it names a bunch of them here, do a fantastic job of Facebooking, and it doesn't just throw pictures on there, and it doesn't argue. You don't call call them names back. Don't threaten them back. Don't do stuff like that. Simply put the facts on there. Put the videos on there that show, hey, if you think hunting is bad, here, look at this video. This is where your beef comes from, like we like we were talking about earlier. Here's, here's cows getting massacred at a slaughter plant are you telling me this is more humane than what we're doing and then you know they're 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 gonna say uh you know um nobody eats giraffe or whatever 
watch watch our shows, watch other people's shows, listen to we're going to give you the facts. We're going to try to tell, give you the things that you can use back against them without arguing, without calls, calling them names. The more intelligent and the less violent you look, the more credibility that you're going to have with the non-hunting public. And the non-hunting public is more important than the anti-hunter to us. Right. Um, they're a bigger they're a bigger part of the crowd. The, the anti-hunters really don't uh, outnumber us, but the non-hunters do. So the non-hunters are the ones that we need to educate. Educate, exactly. Tell them, yep. show them the facts so that they, they're they educated. I mean, it, it, yep. it all comes down to education, period. If you know something and you have strong beliefs in it, educate those that don't so that they understand the reasoning behind it. All of the anti-hunters' so-called facts come from their own their own made-up things and they don't make any sense and if you can point that out and then show them a fact that shows how wrong they are and you lay that out there any educated non-hunter that looks at it is going to see that yep. this non-hunter is on here going crazy calling this guy names threatening to kill him and he's saying this and this hunter just come on here and politely says hey look that's not true here's the facts here's the numbers here's the money Here's the, here's the truth behind the fact that people do eat these animals, and this is what's happening. Here's videos showing it. Here's documentaries. They don't have a leg to stand on. The they'll, sp they'll spew you. There are different things about the, the reasons yeah. for it, but it's all me. There's, it's not factual. They always just make things up, just like another part of our and, country. And here's the other thing you got to remember. We have the guns. So if you're on Facebook and you're arguing back and forth with an anti-hunter, and he's threatening to kill your family, and you threaten to kill his family, the non-hunter looks at you as the violent one. That's right, because you have Because they weapon. know you have weapons. So do not stoop to that level. Don't say those things. The next thing, it says right on there, obey the law. Well, that's a kind of a no-brainer. Don't hunt illegally. Every single time a, a hunter goes and does something stupid, and it gets, gets busted. Some, yeah. That's it, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, it's the same the same fact as, as a lot of other things in life. Is it's the one percent, the one person that does it. Uh, if it's a bad thing, twenty people hear about it. If you do a good thing, a couple of people hear about it. So you have to remember that aspect in everything. It talks on here. Uh, don't chest thump over a video or over a kill on video. There's there's ways to be proud. You know, giving somebody a high five, talking about good shot, shaking their hand. If you have a hunting show on TV, go ahead and upload your hunting videos, YouTube, whatever. But you don't need to be an idiot. And there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of guys that even filming stuff on YouTube and they do stupid things. And I've been guilty of that myself. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you take pictures of things that you probably shouldn't take pictures of and post them. Um, the position of an animal on a vehicle, the position of animals where they're laying, things like that. Think about the pictures when you take them and the impact they're going to have on somebody that doesn't hunt. Picture it on a group of women at church. <laughs> That's your best thing, you know. Think about if you're going to show this picture at a church event, what's the, what's the impact going to be? So if you wouldn't show it there, don't put it on Facebook. The more, the more uh, professional and the better we can make our pictures look, Keep the tongues in the mouths. Keep the blood off the faces. You know, clean things up a little bit. Yeah, don't make it look savagery. Yeah, we don't look like we don't look like a bunch of savages. Exactly, exactly. what you just said. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah, that fall right in the next one. Don't take insulting pictures of your animal. Uh, you know. And 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 there's don't stand on it. Says don't stand on your animal. Uh, uh, don't feed the rage of the anti-hunters by doing that. Now, there's a little known thing out there that is really a bad disrespect to animals, and a lot of a lot of TV hunters are still making this mistake, and they don't realize it. Don't straddle your animal. Don't sit on top of your buck, Always straddling it. Yeah. yeah, and and hold the head between you know hold the head up with and you're sitting on it. Even if you're a gal, it's not right. It's it's a huge show of disrespect in some cultures. It's really dirty, and that's the biggest thing. You know, Anna Hunters will pick that apart and talk about the disrespect. 
it's all in the positioning of the animal. Always try to make the, the shot and the picture look as respectful to the animal as you can. Then let them pick it apart if they want to. But you don't show the animal disrespect. Um, donating meat, always that's a good thing. The more meat you donate, it's a good thing. You put it on Facebook, you know, hey, you donated meat. Donating money, whatever. Uh, outfitters donating uh, to charities and doing things and donating hunts and stuff. Everything you do that's good is always going to help us. and makes the antis look stupid because they don't donate anything. No, all they, they talk like they do. All they do is complain. Yeah. yeah. And here's the last thing. Uh, it's, it's not really, but defend other hunters. We have to stay united. Biggest mistake you make when you see another hunter on there and they do something. We're so jealous of each other. Always got to fight over who shot a bigger buck and all that kind of stuff. Always defend another hunter and you see them getting attacked, you defend them. You don't sit there and pick them apart. You don't jump on another hunter because he shot a lion and you don't think he should have. You don't jump on another hunter for hunting in a high fence because you don't hunt a high fence. He had his reasons. A hunter is a hunter is a hunter. End of story. Never, ever, ever jump on another hunter. Always defend them. Because let me tell you something. When you start dividing our numbers, then their army is bigger than ours. That's right. We have to stay united. That's right. So, uh, like I said, stay united and defend each other. Um, you know, you can disagree, but agree to disagree. I guess uh, stay safe out there while you're hunting, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again next week. Scott, it was great to have you here this morning. Yep, we'll be on more. All right. Uh, take care, and we'll be back next week with some more Big E Outdoor Radio. Have a good one. Yep. <laughs>